Ladies and gentlemen, dear passengers, this is your captain speaking. Thanks for flying with us. We've just had a successful launch, and we're now approaching cruise speed away from the surveillance black hole. In the viewer screens in front of your seats, you can see images taken by our aft camera. The surveillance black hole is in it, but you can't see it. You see, most black holes have halos around them. That's light that nearly falls in it, but still escapes. But this is the surveillance black hole. No personal data escapes from it, not even at the speed of light. So you see nothing, and that's why we're flying away from it. So please keep your phones in airplane mode and disable any data gathering apps or you might be pulled back. As you do that, you might experience a weird and very pleasant feeling of weightlessness. We call that zero G. To avoid floating about in the cabin, please remain seated for the duration of the flight with your seat belts fastened. We are still quite a while away from our destination but I'm sure you're gonna love it, if we make it. Please enjoy the flight, and thanks for flying with us. Thanks for joining our dream. Have a good flight. All right, so let's get started. This is now Alex Alifa speaking. Thanks for inviting me to be here. I'm very excited to speak here and about this project. Um, I'm going to talk about surveillance devices like the iSauron that has cameras, eyes, and uh, microphones, and GPS, and it collects data about you and sends it out to well, you can probably recognize the logo. Now, people carry devices like this around, and I'm not only talking about the eye things. Um, not because of the surveillance, but because they actually offer very desirable features. Now, the thing is, couldn't we get just the features we want? without the surveillance? I'm going to talk some more about that. But I believe that we can make a viable alternative. Much better, actually, than even the personal communicators from Star Trek that will enable us to escape the surveillance black hole. Time is ripe for this. We have the hardware, we have the software, we have the network, and it's not like they're ready. It'll take some work, but I believe it's worth the effort. Then we'll get the desirable features and not the surveillance. So let's do that. Surveillance devices. We live in 1984, not GNU's 1984, but George Orwell's 1984. Our channel screens, though, are portable, and we carry them voluntarily. But just like in 1984, they're always watching you. They have cameras, they have microphones, and because you can carry them around. They also have biometrics and location services and they're always on. You can you cannot turn them off like in 1984 and they're always listening. Now it's not everything like 1984. They only had one big brother. We have many. We install different traps in our mobile phones 
and each one of them serves a different master. There's no way our personal data can escape this way. We have known for quite a long time about this problem, but we haven't managed to fix it somehow. But you gotta remember, smart from a smartphone. Smart means surveilling most actions around tenant. And this is important, tenant. Because many people don't realize that they don't own the devices they carry around. Because they're actually controlled by third parties. And in the very 1984 style, uh, smart is idiotic. And idiotic is spelled with an IOT in it. So. We've known about the problem for quite a while, and yet we can't resist. Why is that? Bradley Kuhn and Karen Sandler talked about that at Fosdem a few years ago, and they actually inspired me to start Zero G because of that talk. So I thank them for that. This, these devices offer very useful features. And why should I give them up? I mean, the features, not the devices. Why should I give up such features as communications, sending and receiving messages, text, audio, video, calls, social media, web, looking up information on the web, why should we give that up? Or even consider giving it up? Maps, directions to get to places, very useful. Why not? You can actually get that, these kind of information without being surveilled, without anyone tracking you, and running only free software. We have free software for that today. What we're missing are the devices and the network. Well, we've had some smartphones designed to run free software and others that free software was ported to work on. But most of them still have some piece in general, the firmware that talks to the phone network running non-free software. The one piece that communicates on your behalf, the one that the phone company uses to track you, is non-free. That's not a coincidence. Now, we have to do better in this regard. But uh, if you think about it, you might realize that in order for the com phone company to deliver messages to you or to, to get calls to you, your attention, they have to know where you are, right? They have to track you, right? So, no problem there? Well, guess what? They don't. Or if you think you need the phone company to attract you, to get calls to you, you got to rethink the network. Tor, the Tor project, actually provided me with the answer. Uh, most people who use Tor, the Onion router, use it for anonymization to contact other uh, size or peers uh, anonymously. It will route your connection through other uh, nodes until and, and none of the nodes knows where the connection is from or where it's to except for the very ends. And know who's starting and who's ending the sequence. Now, Onion services are 
the opposite of that. Because instead of you reaching out to a peer, you get someone out there to listen for communications for you. So they contact uh, another node out there using you know, the, the, on your behalf and it will send back in a way the request all the way to your server. <clears throat> the Power Bay is a famous website that uses this feature and has remained uh, untraceable and unblockable for several years. I use that too to connect to my home server over SSH um, regardless of whatever my ISP might think of my having an SSH of my willing to get SSH incoming connections. I'm behind a dynamic IP address that changes every so often and it's actually for sometimes unroutable, an unroutable address and yet Tor doesn't care. It just figures out and it just works. So you can reach your home server, it could be a freedom box, it could be just a web server, like our web server is running, the Zero G web server is running on a server back home behind the same dynamic IP address and it's reachable thanks to Tor. I figure, hey, why not use the same feature on ultra-portable communicators? Uh, you announce your, the, the address where you want to be called, not as a phone number, but as a tour only an address. And then people call you there. The thing is, uh, Tor only supports uh, TCP, not UDP. So some uh, services may have to be revisited. But there is there are other ways to go about building zero G for this sort of interactive call. Oh, by the way, uh, you can see some prototype logos of zero G uh, on this slide. Um, I know they're not finished. But you can help us with that. That would be appreciated. Um, as for calls, uh, I know that GNU-NET uh, has peer-to-peer -peer interfaces. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer infrastructure and one of the applications built on top of it uh, can actually make calls and GNU-NET can route calls through pretty much anything. So that's another way to go about uh, the call functionality. gnu Jammy can do that too. So that's yet another way to go. gnu Jammy is entirely peer-to-peer so there are several ways to go about having your friends find you without the phone company tracking you. Cool, huh? Now, um, if you're communicating through the phone company, uh, like using their data link, they still they can still track you through your SIM card. So, better not use that. Um, what can we use for uh, non-tracked communication then? Uh, Wi-Fi, community Wi-Fi. Several cities are setting up uh, community Wi-Fi services uh, that we might uh, use, rely on. Um, 
Would it be really cool if you have something like OLPC Mesh, so the um, One Laptop Per Child project, uh, has this notion of schools having uh, open Wi-Fi or open mesh networking signal for st students who live nearby to pick up and they would relay those signals to students who lived farther away and so the network would end up covering the entire city very cool stuff but that that implementation depended on non free farmer uh, it would be really cool to replicate that in, in, in freedom respecting uh, hardware and software something very cool very awesome that daniel peterson one of our earliest collaborators has been working on beside this logo that is that he proposed for zero g uh, is long range radio uh, he's working on a modem that you could have on your phone uh, possibly as a usb external device if not built into the phone that could get you hundreds of kilometers of reach uh, in lowly low density populated areas uh, very low bandwidth for this uh, low frequency but you can could in this design that we're talking about use that low frequency to ask for help from the road if your car breaks like sending a text message or to negotiate connections in other frequencies that offer a lot more bandwidth so you could actually get internet service or uh, calls or whatever um, if there is coverage if there, is, there are others willing to route uh, you you and your communications i think that's pretty cool thanks daniel now let me talk about hardware a bit um in my mind zero g is is a concept i'm not thinking of a product named zero g i think of a specification that software vendors and hardware vendors and networking vendors kind of there too um, and, and time is ripe for this we have a lot of technology available but i'm not uh, looking to specifying one kind of like cpu although i want something to be free as in uh, res 5 is, is possibly free uh, I'm not specifying GPUs, but though I look forward to the Libre SOC uh, efforts for CPU and GPU. Um, Wi-Fi, well, we don't have a lot of uh, free Wi-Fi available out there. Uh, Atheros 5K and 9K are, are probably the best choices, especially or operation without infrastructure as in peer-to-peer -peer mode um, although it seems desirable to avoid using uh, GSM or, or whatever uh, it might make sense to, to at least start with devices that also support that kind of networking um, so I wouldn't rule them out but it's not something uh, it's probably useful for development uh, as in it's the sort of device that you're gonna find out there uh, even for freedom uh, concerned suppliers but I'd like to see something in which you could at least uh, disable the 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 modem uh, by hardware now what in my mind would be really cool 
uh, is something along the lines of the Yoma 68 project. Same people who are now working on Librasoc. Um, what they figured out was, hey, we could have a very small computer like a card, uh, a, a PCMCIA card, for the sort of that used to expand laptops, but in this case it's an entire computer. I'm just talking about the form factor. And you can put that inside a desktop case or a laptop case. That was what they planned to do when they successfully crowdfunded in and, and I'm not sure they already delivered that. But I thought, hey, why not put the same card inside a phone? And then why not have the phone have the connectors to become a desktop or to become a laptop? Uh, so uh, the laptop will be just the case that connects to the phone and offers it a keyboard, a mouse or touchpad, uh, a screen, additional storage, networking, wired even, and while it offers power to recharge the phone and then it's a single computer you can travel for a conference and connect to the projector directly from your phone for your presentation I really like to see that <laughs> who wouldn't uh, I started when I first presented this as who would want one of these uh, now the question is more like uh, how many of these would you like right now even if a lot of people in our community are interested in the these devices um, someone who would like to make them would probably need uh, a broader business plan to make them uh, viable. So I have some advice for them. I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm not in the business of making uh, portable or ultra-portable communicators, but I have some thoughts to share if anyone is interested. Uh, my reference is mainly the, the One Laptop Per Child project. They designed uh, devices to sell them to schools or rather, to, to offer them to school kids, but to sell them to governments in large numbers, because you needed to make them in large numbers to make them viable back then. Now, we don't need such large numbers like millions uh, to make hardware devices viable nowadays, but it still makes sense to sell uh, so hundreds of thousands of units to governments all over the world. You just got to make them very sturdy for children and cute and very usable and user repairable. These are all desirable features for a device. Mm, another piece of advice that I pass on from the One well, Laptop Per Child project is to focus not so much on performance but on cost. If you're gonna sell a million units to a government, don't make them more costly than a hundred dollars a unit. I think that's a reasonable number to aim for. Um, and then use public education to grow the network that everyone else is going to rely on for communication just like OLPC did. Uh, and, and of course, why would governments uh, buy this device rather than uh, commercial um, um, proprietary uh, surveilling stuff that others are offering? Well, who would want to push surveillance telescreens onto school kids? Only very evil governments would do that, right? 
so there's our chance we can sell uh, the opposite of ad education that's my daughter's term um, but we can even use strong copyleft in the phone op the portable communicator operating system to try to avoid its being uh, contaminated by non-free software. Not sure it can still do that or even if that would be a good idea but it's something to keep in mind and uh, gotta think of privacy preserving apps ideally peer-to-peer -to, -peer to avoid centralization uh, and and uh, services as, a, as software substitutes uh, and for that we need a very pervasive network so that's sort of what I think a business oriented uh, zero G harder manufacture should keep in mind there's some more something that bit the OLPC project really hard was some partners that had very severe conflicts of interest like there were representatives from Intel and Microsoft in the OLPC board of directors and when the the OLPC project was negotiating huge sales to governments all over the world somehow Intel and Microsoft learned about those potential deals and uh, let's say uh, made a, 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 a different offer to them um, we should expect very fierce opposition for uh, this kind of revolutionary project so uh, I expect phone service providers would uh, dislike would the, the revamp in their service offerings that this would force and some hardware manufacturers might be unhappy um, so whoever uh, works in this should be aware of these risks um, I, I, I should mention that phone service providers shouldn't be entirely unhappy uh, because uh, there it'll probably take quite a while for uh, lots of people to jump into this bandwagon and mean in the meantime a lot of us will probably hire uh, forwarding services like jump.chat uh, that delivers uh, SMS over XMPP and calls over SIP um, from the regular and to the regular uh, phone system so that's how you can get a regular phone number on your zero G device when there is one but the main point I want to make is, is well um, OLPC was revolutionary but it didn't survive however netbooks were a trend that it set and that it has remained with us for quite a while so uh, this revolutionary plan that I have might not um, mean any specific device will remain but I hope the idea will and I'm willing to or and, and I'm willing to build the change and to be the change um, 
even if eventually it seems like we fail, I think if we make a dent, that's already a great thing because surveillance is not something that we can tolerate. And if we succeed in decentralizing the net, a lot of uh, of of innovation that will tr tr tend to keep it decentralized will evolve and hopefully resist attempts to monopolize it again. So let's conquer Marvel Freedom, shall we? Well, thanks for listening. Um, keep in mind, zero G is sort of a concept uh, encompassing uh, Tor uh, network overlays, like, and draws a lot of ideas from the One Laptop Per Child project and from the OpenMoku uh, phones and Yoma 68. It's kind of a cross of all of these um, and a number of other ideas, but it's mainly a concept and we need people to realize that concept on the various fronts. So we'd like to collaborate. Uh, we are on the Zero G channel on Freenode. Um, there is a, this n website that you can uh, learn more information about the project from. Um, and if you don't want to collaborate and do your own thing in zero G ideas, that's fine too. It's a little weird though. Um, and well, um, I'm now ready to take questions. Uh, if you can reach me, if I'm available. Um, I look forward to them. I look forward to seeing you on the channel. And uh, be free. That's what this is about. Freedom. Software freedom, hardware freedom, network freedom, communication freedom. And human rights are all about uh, human freedoms and rights. And uh, surveillance is the opposite of that. So let's escape the surveillance black hole uh, building this right thank you so much
Yeah, right. we're live. Very good. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. I hope you have time for a few questions. Oh, sure. Uh, and the first one uh, that came in during your talk is, uh, uh, given that there is more tracking on Wi-Fi than there are on telecom, could it make sense to use randomized MAC addresses so that tracking across community Wi-Fi access points would be more difficult? And are there other measures that would make sense in this context? Yes, absolutely. Um, thanks for the question. This is this is a very important point that I failed to address in, in the conference. Um, randomizing MAC addresses is, is definitely in the roadmap. Uh, when, one of the reasons uh, why this is difficult in authenticated contexts is that sometimes the MAC address is used as part of the authentication. But once we are with, work, working with open Wi-Fi, then we definitely want to do that and, and keep user and users anonymous. Now, there is another difficulty that I also did not mention, uh, namely that radios have a kind of a fingerprint built into them, not by design, but by uh, slight differences in manufacturing of it in each individual unit. I have no clue as to how to address that. I don't know how much tracking there is based on that, but the Wi-Fi radios can be profiled on this basis, and this could be a source of problems. Now, since the plan is to use Tor, ideally, uh, you won't be connecting, uh, I mean, you're, you'll use your device, but all of your interactions will be anonymized through uh, different networks. So there won't be a way to tie your interactions with uh, the radio that is not necessarily associated to your personal identity. It would be something that would have to take a lot of care to avoid uh, correlating. Thank you. And uh, we'll uh, skip to a longer question before we go to the smaller ones. Um, the question states that the problem with free hardware most of the time is that they don't have the support regarding cheap hardware and don't sell a lot of devices. The progress of the phones today is there is a demand for new hardware from users every year. What are your thoughts about that? If you could give a user an open source phone that doesn't cost too much and has the latest hardware. Um, well, first, of all, I don't care so much about open source as I care about free software. Um, but let's not get into that, I suppose. Um, yes, we have the problem of scale, and that's something that I try to address. And, and the business plan slides. Uh, but we're, we're always going to have the, the issue of, of, of uh, uh, viability in terms of costs uh, until we actually get uh, large-scale production, or uh, I doubt it, but let's consider it, the possibility that uh, making hardware in small numbers uh, becomes just as inexpensive as in large ones. Um, I, I, I disagree. I don't like the demand for new hardware every few years. I'm still uh, happy to use my NeoFree runner from 13 years ago. And um, I don't see a reason to I actually I see I see reasons to not upgrade because the upgrades uh, will make things worse. Um, so I, I, I don't want to get into I, I don't want us to get into the race of, of uh, very um, expensive and, and, and up to date hardware. I think the focus of the should be on on hardware that is enough to deliver the features of communication that we want and need and well other needs can be addressed by other means okay thank you um 
Another question. What do you think about the Purism SIM cards? Do you know anything so this, about them? The, this, I, I became acquainted. I think it came up just last week after I had recorded the session, actually. And I, I don't have a lot to say about it. It's an interesting idea of anonymizing users by sort of and sort of sort of anonymizing users by sort of uh, registering all sim cards to peerism this means that peerism actually knows who each user is which is not ideal uh, but it might be slightly better than uh, lots of companies knowing who you are um, I don't know that I like the notion of placing so much trust on on peerism, not because it's peerism, but because trusting any corporation is probably not a great idea, even if it's a public benefit corporation. But uh, I, I'm I'm curious. I'm I'm looking to that, um, but but I don't know a lot. Right, it will be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, next question is, uh, what do you think about uh, PinePhone and search devices? So, the PinePhone is one that I have my eyes on, um, mainly because it's reasonably inexpensive. And Pine, Pine actually announced a uh, 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 phone-less version of the PinePhone last week. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And I'm very excited about that. But but Pi, the Pine phone specifically uh, and Pine devices in general seem to use uh, uh, Wi-Fi devices that require non-free firmware, which uh, renders them uh, very undesirable to me personally. Um, I, I think it might be nice and very very interesting to use the Pine Phone, the, the Librem Five that has the same problem. Uh, there, there is the Megaphone. There is uh, another. There, there, there are various uh, initiatives of phones and phoneless uh, communication d devices uh, coming up. That ha each one has its own set of. Uh, freedom issues, but I, I see them all as potential uh, development devices for to to realize uh, the, the the vision of zero G at some point, uh, and 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 they can actually be a part of the broader zero G uh, freedom community in that. Uh, you don't have to insist that the parties you're talking to uh, are running only free software and free hardware and stuff like that. We we, we have uh, free protocols that that we're using for we're going to use for interactions. Um, but I personally uh, would would like more freedom than that, and I'm I'm hoping uh, to to make that viable. To, by building a, large, a broader community in which that can fit and where there is enough demand for that to that it actually gets produced. Thank you very much. That was uh, the last of the already, uh, well, the questions that came in during your talk. I have one on my own. Um, Shoot. Yeah, cool. I'm wondering, why why do you believe this plan is going to work <laughs> well i i get inspiration i draw a lot of inspiration from richard stallman um it's not that i um have to believe that it may work for me to fight for that but i see this as the a necessary fight, uh, uh, and 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 pretty much uh, the one uh, path that we have to freedom in mobile computing. So, um, faced with the choice between um, <laughs> doing not nothing and watching the situation unfold 
in the direction it's going, which I dislike very profoundly. Or um, devising a plan that stands a, admittedly small chance of working. Um, I'll go for the latter any time. Uh, it's, it's, it's part of the spirit of being a freedom fighter, I guess, and a happy hacker. Um, now, the thing is, in order for this to work, uh, we don't have, we don't need all of the pieces to, to fit together to get an improvement and a significant improvement. If we get many of the pieces or, or a few of the pieces, things will already be better. So there is this uh, broad vision with several layers and several components and, and, and lots of uh, thoughts, but every step that we take uh, towards freedom will be a useful one and uh, I think worth uh, giving a try. Thank you. Uh, another question, how many people are associated with or active in the uh, Zero-G project at the moment? Um, <laughs> we can count in a hand, I think. Um, so, I, I, I announced it last year, and then Daniel Peterson started working on, on radio stuff. And, and then I got involved with the FSF, and then uh, there was Richard's resignation, and I became FSF president for some time. And, and I sort of had to leave the project aside. And now um, looking into uh, getting more involved again, I plan to get involved with LibreSOC, dot org um to to make the hardware viable to 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 or rather to make the hardware components available so that devices with it could be made um but that was in the same turmoil and 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 i haven't got involved yet um i Aside from, from, from Daniel, I don't know of anyone else who has put a lot of time into the project proper. I don't count my own time looking to stuff like, can this work under Tor? Can this, can, what other technologies can we use? So I, I tend to discount what I do myself. So it, it's not a lot of people. It's, uh, we can consider that this is a starting, like, whenever you want to get involved with it. And, and by you, I mean a plural. Right. Uh, another question that popped in uh, uh, while we were talking. Uh, have there been a discussion regarding open source uh, uh, software defined radio? And uh, Creating it uh, using uh, open chip design services. Mm -hmm. uh, I've looked a little into that about a year ago. Um, I thought that was uh, one strong way to go. But what I get from from Daniel is that uh, software defined radio is an order of magnitude more expensive than uh, a, a custom radio for specific frequencies. I have no clue whether he's right about that. I, 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 tr I trust him on, on these matters because he knows a lot more about radios than I do. Uh, but if someone th thinks different uh, and, and can show us something on the order of, of uh, I don't know, $20, $30 per a piece, um, as opposed to uh, 150 or 200, then that would be very cool. But it's because of these reasons, because mainly of cost issues, it's it's not in my personal roadmap at the moment, which is not to say that if anyone wants to build a zero-G uh, device that has a software-defined radio, 
that'll be awesome. But it's it's not in my personal uh, set of recommendations at the moment for the the strategic reasons of of cost affordability of the devices. Right. I think that was the last of the questions. And uh, just to say uh, thank you again for taking the time to uh, bring us up to speed on the Zero-G project. Well, really thank you so you much for it. listening. I look forward to seeing you in the Zero-G channel and Freenode. Um, we'll probably soon have a... Well, we have the website now. It's It looks awful, I know. Uh, I just set it up just before the conference so that, well, we had something. But uh, I'm going to turn that into probably a wiki wiki instance. And um, then we will have a wiki, probably mailing list. It is, I don't know if people still like mailing lists. I do. But uh, let us know in IRC if you'd like to participate through mailing list. And, 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 and then I'll look into setting one up. Oh, there's another question here, right? Right, yeah, we can do them right now. Um, it's uh, is the Brazilian government invo involved in relevant freedom of free software projects close to zero G or similar? Um, gee, the Brazilian government is, is is a bit of a mess at the moment, but surprisingly, there are some state governments that have supported um, uh, interesting developments. There is a professor at the University of Sao Paulo, that's, that's uh, Professor Zufo. He's been working on, on, on making uh, chips, microprocessors, uh, the Caninos Locos project. And I've been in conversation with him about uh, making devices with that chip that would operate as personal communicators, uh, ultra-portable ones, like the ones I have in mind for zero G. Um, so something might come out of that, but um, there is a lot of uh, unpredictability and in, in his funding sources at the moment. So, uh, We'll see how that goes. I mean, the Brazilian government, federal government, is doing a lot to kill uh, science and technology development in the country, which makes me very unhappy. Um, and, and well, we'll see. I have not heard about new 900 that I remember. Is that a cross? Uh, that, that's a separate question that I see in the, we, the, the Etherpad. Uh, yes. Is that a cross between the Nokia device and uh, Neo Free Runners or something like that? Does anyone know? Please let me know. Uh, I don't know, but I had a look at the web page and it looks very similar to the N900 or the Nokia device. So maybe it's a reuse of it or I don't know. Oh, there are other, yeah, awesome. Um, there is more stuff coming up. Uh, see, this is this is what I mean when I say the time is ripe. Uh, when I started looking at this, I saw there were like a handful of projects that I immediately found that 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 sort of fit in the general pattern of of what I was looking for. Um, and and as I keep looking, new stuff keeps popping up. So. Uh, Time is ripe. <laughs> there, there, over over this one year uh, period, I've 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 got confirmation that these things are happening, and we if we don't help shape them so that they serve us as opposed to the other way around, then uh, well things will keep going in the direction that we. Uh, I, I, I suppose I can say we don't like much. Yeah, I really hope you are right that uh, we are able to turn the tables around, but uh, we'll see. Uh, if you join us on IRC, I'm sure a lot of people would like to uh, talk to you there, but I think we'll wrap up this video now and uh, 
I'll see you later on IRC. Thank you so much for the opportunity to address uh, this community. And thanks for listening and for sharing. And I look forward to talking to you all in IRC uh, on either channel. Happy Thank hacking. You. Happy thanks. hacking. Bye.